Death Holler brought us Season 3 Slash or Pass It became the classic horror film podcast of its time And now Death Holler brings us The most shocking season ever Season 4 Dead or Dead Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Imagine, if you will, that one of the hosts is absolutely terrified of zombies. So, what's the plan? Bash him in the head, that seems to work out. Now, accept the fact there is no escaping this horror. Death Holler brings back the dead. Death Holler. Listener discretion is advised. With hospitality like this, you'll never want to leave. We hope you stay alive. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk here. Welcome back to Death Holler. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Day. Joining me as always, my co-host, La Urena, and we are discussing the third George Romero film of this season, uh, Diary of the Dead, not one of his um, more popular movies. 2007 was the year that it came out. Um, tagline, pretty simple, shoot the head, or shoot the dead, I guess it is, but I mean... It, it's it, it's appropriate. They're shooting a film. They're shooting zombies. It's you know it it, it kind of goes along with each other. But if it was shoot the head, um, I would have been so happy me. because you never get anyone that says shoot the head. It's always let's waste a bunch of ammo until we figure out that it has to be the head. <laughs> and, the, and the stupid thing in this movie is, is they know they have to go for the head from almost the beginning and they still yes. fuck it up and mm-hmm. place it. They still have to be told multiple times. Uh, just, I don't know. It's, um, th- this was definitely the decline of Romero right before his unfortunate passing. And I mean, there's a worse film out there. It's called Survival of the Dead, but this one's definitely on the the downslope. Some would say Land of the Dead was also a down, you know, one of his uh, lesser movies. But there's things I really like about that movie. Yeah, but this one. Uh, I was gonna say yeah. Land of the Dead. Uh, from what I remember, I liked it. Is it great? No, but is it fun to watch? Yes. Yeah, there's there's a lot of fun things in it. I mean, and he's got commentary in that one too. It's not as cohesive. He's yeah, but you know, it's it's a little bit better than this one. I, I this movie, uh, of course, this is directed by George Romero and written by him. Um, it's this one's more like his. He saw the where, what the Blair Witch had kind of like put into the market, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Well, I think I can do that." You know, especially on a lower budget, and he does to a degree, but then he doesn't. We'll get into yes, that as we discuss that's the movie. A perfect way of describing it. Because I'm going to say right off the bat, we reviewed Savage Land, which will be released, obviously, well, tomorrow. But for the listeners, they'll already have heard it. <clears throat> but this movie is no Savage Land. And Savage Land had a way smaller budget and way less of a actor's bill, if you will. 
Yes, and and didn't have the directing chops. I mean, Romero knows how to direct a movie. He didn't just do even zombie movies. I mean, he did branch out and had some really good films. I mean, even just, I mean, regular horror films out there. So. Yeah. Uh, music by Norman Orens, uh, Orenstein, um, which is odd in a movie that is found footage, but they, I mean, we, we mentioned on Savage Land, Savage Land, Savage Land has a soundtrack because it's like talking heads after the fact. Mm-hmm. This one, they have to give an explanation at the beginning about why it's got music and, and it's kind of a lame one. In my opinion, it's the, the girlfriend, uh, Deborah who says that she wants to punch up Jason's like movie and, and she adds in like scary noises and music to make it like you make you pay more attention to it. Oh my God. But that, but that I mean, she says that right at the beginning and it's like, you, you know that that kind of defeats the purpose of a found footage. Yes. You're supposed to be in the moment. You're supposed to be like experience it with them. And whenever there's like some kind of going on in the yeah. background, that doesn't really sell it that way oh my god i you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna say it right now so that the listeners know i did not notice there was music in this film at all so when we talk about that if i give you any kind of input on the music i'm gonna say you're gonna you have to call me a liar because i didn't notice i also didn't notice that there was no music in blair witch which is so dumb but it was such a good movie like blair witch was such a good movie that it didn't need it and I don't. I could be wrong. I'm. I'm currently spoiler. I'm. I'm watching Wreck to uh, prepare for a future episode, and I don't think there's music in that either because they rely upon like what's happening in front actual, of the camera to kind of sell it. Yeah, actual found footage, and I respect that. Um, I don't. That's. I. I probably need to watch this one again. And I watched it, FYI, it's, I watched it, well, we're going to say two and a half times because I watched it and I only got through half, halfway through it and I told you, hey, I only made it halfway through Diary of the Dead. And then I tried rewatching it again by myself at night and I couldn't do it by myself. I was like, okay, this is a little too scary for me. I can't do this. And then I watched it again in its entirety uh, because Noah made me restart it and we watched it together. So I'll give Romero this, even though it's one of his lesser movies. He can still elicit a horror response. I oh, mean, yes. he knows. Yes, he knows how to hit the horror beats. It's just that the the movie, the plot, and everything's where the downfall is in the movie. Budget of two million dollars, which doesn't sound like a lot and isn't a lot, mm-hmm. but it was a damn sight less for Savage Land and a better movie. So, yeah, you know, however you want to read that. Uh, box office five point three million. So it did. It did turn a profit, which is good because at this point, Romero was kind of, he was really burnt by the restrictions put on him. I mean, he got a, he got as good of a deal as he was ever going to get from Universal when he made Land of the Dead. Yes. But he still was, you know, they, they, they kind of, you know, tied his hands so much that he, and it graded on him so bad that he, he still wanted to avoid the, you know, the, the major studios. So that's why he went back to making independent films in, you know, Canada, yeah. there's a lot of, every actor in this is, or an actress is a Canadian. So, or okay. pretty much all of them. It's cheaper to do it out there too. We know that for a fact. And I was going to say, okay, with his name attached to things, cause you hear George A. Romero and you're like, yes, definitely. Yes. You know, but with his name attached to it, does that mean he gets royalties too? Or does it have to be laid out in his contract? I mean, he he probably got something on the back end of uh, Land of the Dead as far as like the you know the um, money taken in, but uh, I think I can't. We'll have to get to it whenever because uh, we'll cover Land around probably the same time we cover Day to just kind of like wrap up his better movies mm-hmm. and avoid and not even acknowledge that Survival of the Dead is a thing because <laughs> that's really. That really is not the coda that you want to remember, America. Because mm-hmm. I, I tried watching that, and I'm like, why did I even do this? I, yeah. I felt terrible. Well, as we to, stated to many times, there's going to be a lot of zombie films that don't get that don't make it this season, uh, and that'll be for a later zombie season. Because there's tons of witch movies, there's tons of zombie movies, there's tons of devil movies, there's a bunch of movies we haven't gotten to, a bunch of slashers that we've already they, reviewed. They, they literally just came out with a new zombie movie, apparently. That movie, Asriel, that just came out with Samara Weaving in it is Ooh. kind of a zombie movie in a way. It's not, they're not, 
the zombies like we think of them, but they're, yeah. I mean, crazy psychotic things that run in packs and attack you. Same kind of mold, you know. Interesting. I mean, Azrael uh, is the angel of death, so kind of. It's a religious movie. It oh. takes place after after the rapture. Oh. So these are the people left on the planet after the all the good people left, you know. Oh, the good people get to leave <laughs> and, the, and the bad people get to stay. Yeah. Hasn't this been hell long enough? Like, what if, <laughs> it's not going to be anything different. <laughs> well, apparently, like, mud-covered zombie-like creatures trying to kill you is kind of what they've got to look forward to. Oh, my God. Um, Post-rapture. Anyways, that's what, I mean, that just came out, so I'm interested to see how it, Chris Gore gave it, gave it like, a an okay recommendation. He said it's not. He said, don't rush out to a theater to watch it, but definitely watch it at some point, you know, uh, if you're a horror fan. So, um, principal players in this is Joshua Close, who plays Jason Creed. Um, he's the cameraman in the movie. You don't really see him, but like in a couple of different scenes in the beginning and like in the middle. And then I guess toward the end, whenever he's getting his face eaten off. <laughs> and, uh,. <laughs> He's college student, wannabe filmmaker slash documentarian. Um, he was apparently also an exorcism of Emily Rose in the Fargo TV series. Okay. Uh, and funny thing about the actors and actresses in this movie, they are our generation exactly. They're the only ones I've ever seen that are our generation. They are 40, 41 to 43 years old, almost every actor and wow. actress in this movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Morgan plays Deborah Moynihan, who is Jason's girlfriend. She's also a camera woman. She's, uh, middle of the movie, she kind of picks up the camera, and that's where we see Joshua again, uh, or Jason's character. And, uh, she's, um, she's got a very antagonistic relationship with, with Jason mm-hmm. in the movie. It's, yeah. it's off-putting at times. And I didn't then, even know they were together. Yeah, and then... It's almost like he's getting emotionally cut through most of the movie. I don't know if you got that vibe, but like he, and it's his own fault. Like instead of him like stepping up to actually be the hero through a lot of the movie, he's watching this other guy um, kind of, you know, step up and, and, and save his girlfriend through most of the movie. And you see the two of them like hugging on each other. And there's, it, it, all it does. I mean, they get very close to just outright cucking him right in front of him, you know, but it's, a, he, it's cause he refuses to be, you know, and that's, yeah. that's the biggest complaint. A lot of people have about this movie is that there is nobody out there period that will not break down at some point and, you know, drop the camera and help the other people around them. Even in Savage land, he stopped being the cameraman and tried to save the girl. Exactly. Um, which is why, I mean, even though we hear it a couple of times that they're together, you know, I'm like, are they together? What's the, what's their definition of together? Because I was getting more, she was kind of single, but then she has the choice between the camera guy and the other guy. And I was kind of confused as to what exactly was going on. Now, there is a scene where Jason is filming and there's another girl that uh, basically tra- Tracy, but sh- where she kind of is like asking for him for help while he's filming. I'm like, bitch, you're making the dumbest decisions right now. Like I kind of don't want to help you. Oh yeah. Whenever she's running through the woods yes. away from the, the zombie uh, mummy at that. Point yes. Which is time. hilarious. Oh, that was so funny. Now see, I told you dead people walk slow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back to um, Jason. Is she? I mean, it's established from the beginning though that she's supposed to be his girlfriend because yeah. they he goes to her dorm and then there's that one creepy guy that's already in there. Yeah, and he's just like, I'm just here to rob the place. What are you doing in a female dorm, huh? Oh, you God. know, like he's got that whole line about it and uh, security. Yeah, you know, security, and he and but I don't know. Like from it, it's. You get moments where she acts like she cares about Jason, especially toward the end. But then, like you know, throughout most of the movie, it's it's like they're uh, they they cannot stand each other, or she can't stand him. He's just impassive, which makes it all the worse overall. And that's kind of the reason I, I think this movie suffers because he shows no emotion for anybody in this movie, even her. Yeah, like, I don't through the majority of it. I think I don't. 
No, okay, we need to circle back to this when we talk about the very ending when Jason is kind of giving a, it's like almost like an introduction to his film. Well, we'll, because I want to circle back to why he did what he did. So I don't want to give away the ending yet, so. Um, Michelle was also in Heartland, the TV series, and she was in the episode of Supernatural, which films in Canada, which makes sense, yes, you know. Definitely. She looks uh, like a Scott supernatural Wentworth. actress. Uh, yeah, I, it, I'm pretty sure she's been in uh, since this. She's been in uh, Hallmark movies, which also oh. makes sense because <laughs> that's also Vancouver, you know. And uh, Scott Wentworth plays Andrew Maxwell, the college professor slash ex military guy in the movie. Um, he's he's probably one of the most interesting characters in the group. I actually like his character quite a bit. Uh, kind of a drunk, but he's not like the drunk doctor that was in Return of the Living Dead Part 2. He's not, you know, it, yeah. it's more of a sad drunk than it is like a, ooh, I'm a little tipsy, you know, yeah. that kind of drunk. Uh, Sean Roberts plays Tony Ravello, the skeptic turned pragmatic survivor. He is the, the guy that, looks like Deborah's all but like went to in the movie by yeah. the end of it, you know. The uh, the oh God, National Guard guy. I don't know if he's not he's not, he's just um he's the guy at the beginning of it that doesn't believe that the zombies are actually zombies and then they have to prove to him halfway through the the there's the guy who's over like the sound and and that sort of stuff and and when they're in the hospital he like stabs the zombie multiple times and it, with a I think even IV pole. Oh and he's yeah. Like, He's like, is he dead? You know, Tony, is he dead? You know, so he takes a turn throughout the movie. He goes from like, none of this is real. This is all the government just trying to lie to us to actually toward the end. He's looking out for people in particular. He looks out for Deborah. That's the wrong kind of character because the, the, if anything, someone who's against the government or suspicious of the government is going to be like, this is the government doing this, this, this to us, but they created this monster. They wouldn't be like, this isn't real. They'd be like, no, they made them this way. It was probably in that fucking vaccine. <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, I'm instead of watching the movies that we're supposed to be watching for this season, I've been binge watching Z Nation because oh shit, I started watching a couple episodes on Tubi, and it's actually fairly interesting the route they go with that. And they they have tons of cool zombies in the show. They have nuclear oh, zombies that are yeah. irradiated. They've got, I mean, they got plant zombies. But all that said, there's a plot line in the third season where they're where they're talking about uh, there's a character who's using a vaccine to mind control people, oh. and it's really funny given all the yeah stuff that you know conspiracy theorists came out about the 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 jab back in 2020. Uh, and it was it was close to that time as being filled too because there's an episode where a couple of guys are trying are trying to grip this town and they're um they're they're politicians trying to be president of what's left of America oh, sure. and one of them clearly looks like a Trump stand in because he's got a bad wig and it's and and oh, and they're God. both talking about building walls which is hilarious oh, okay. you know but. Building a wall definitely makes yes. sense in the context of a you, zombie apocalypse. You need a wall in a zombie apocalypse. You need a moat. You need, there's multiple things that you need. Um, Z Nation, I like Z Nation because Z Nation, I can enjoy Z Nation. I will get scared, but I can also enjoy it because it's so bad, it's good. Yeah, there, there's some episodes, especially toward the beginning, where the acting is so terrible oh, from God. some of the, the leads, but... The good thing is that series actually weeds out the bad actors and keeps the ones that are the most interesting. Like Doc stays throughout the whole series, and he's my favorite character in the show. And uh, unlike The Walking Dead, which pissed me off because they take the best actor yeah. on the show, like John Bernthal, and they kill him off. And it's just like, okay, we introduce this one person, and they they kind of suck at acting, but you know they're the person you're going to follow for a while now. And it's like. What are you doing? Like, well, you had the, one of the best actors in the show right there. That made sense because that was back when they were actually following the comic slash graphic novel of it. But they don't, they, they stopped doing that. So some of the characters they got rid of, like when they got rid of the kid, that didn't make any goddamn sense. That's when, that's when they lost me. Because it's like, no, 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 no. This kid carries the comics towards... I don't know. I don't even know where we're at in the comics right now. From the middle to wherever it's at now... I'm like I, I I didn't I couldn't I was like you, and even, no, and you've even gone the off. plot line of 
even the plot line of the TV show up to that point mm-hmm. was everything was hinting that Carl was going to be the leader of the group by yes! that point. By every, oh my God. Yeah. Even he, even the actor that played him didn't understand it. And I was like, I'm with you on this one. That was some bull shit. Um, I think, I think on the back end, it was because his parents were wanting more money and they just didn't want to pay that to him. And also he was wanting to go to college and they'd have to write him out of a few episodes, but it was only for a short time. And they, they could have filmed, they were filming during a lot of the summers anyways, that had been off. They just didn't want to have to deal with it. So they, it was, I mean, being fucking assholes to, I think you know, it was a and poor then him out of the show. I can't believe it was still going. I know they have a bunch of spinoffs and everything. Um, on the flip side, and including horror, and you probably know this, I finally, finally started watching Doctor Who. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming New Who. Which did you start with? New Who. Way? I'm not going back to the 60s. I'm good. 60s, yeah. 70s, whatever. No, thank you. It's bad enough that British comedy, to me, is so, like... I don't know. It's British comedy. And that's all I'm going to say. It's, it's really dry. So, yes. and, and you, and you hate subtlety in, in American movies. I can't imagine British movies. Correct. So <laughs> we, the new one. So the ninth doctor, I was, I liked him, but that whole season to me was some bullshit. I was like, who watches this? And it's like, I'm going to keep being a doctor who fan. I couldn't get into it. And then uh, I'm in, I'm on the 10th doctor now, obviously uh, much better. I do like him from several movies he's been in, and they definitely had a zombie episode in this season. Um, is it the mummy episode? Where's my mummy episode? Is that the no. one you're referencing? Because that it's not. Where's my <laughs> mummy? God, it, no, you're talking. That's the plague. Doc, well, that was almost zombieish. It is because he, the nanites or whatever, spoiler mm-hmm. for that episode, are making copies of the kid yes. over and over and over again, and they're all and they're all basically like, "Where's mom?" It, it's kind of creepy. Yes, it is it, good but. and creepy. No, there wasn't actually a zombie one. There's space zombies, which goes with what we were just watching, um, but it was basically that these cat-like people were making. Um, we're infecting these humans. I don't know if they're infecting them to try to find a cure. I'm trying to remember it now. Uh, it was a few episodes ago. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> And it gets more interesting. every So every episode for this season that I've been watching, it gets better and better. So like all the episodes before, I kind of just lose what I was watching. Because I'm like, oh, th- that man, that was good. Oh, shit, this is hella good. Oh, shit, this is hella good. <laughs> Yeah, wait till you get to the Weeping Angels. That's like oh, I can't some of the best wait. stuff they did. I cannot wait. I actually can't wait to get, uh, so I'm in like the 2008, 2007, 2008 Doctor Who right now, I think. I think 2013 is when they got Matt um, oh Smith. God, Smith. Yeah, that's, that's everybody's got their Doctor. I, I know this is a horror podcast, folks, but Doctor Who kind of does. <laughs> Doctor Who has does horror. horror elements. It Big does. time, because there was a devil in the most recent one, a space devil, a the, actual devil in space yeah and then like matt smith has to there's a creature that part way through his run that you can only see uh or when you see it when you're when you're looking at it you know that it's there but as soon as you look away you forget that it existed oh, and it's shit. like this and they're all over the earth and they've taken over and nobody knows that they're there because like i said you forget once you look away from them that's insane but, but Matt Smith was my doctor. That's, you know, that was the one that got me into the show. And then I went back and, you know, appreciated like Tenant's run and, oh, then, you yeah. know, uh, Eccleston that ran before him. But Eccleston yeah. wasn't bad. It was just, I think that season was poorly written. And I do not like Rose. I don't like her <laughs> at all. David Tennant, I, I, I love I like him. Amy, I, I like Amy way better than Rose. Okay. A lot of people might want my you know to kill me over that but you know that's well they might want to kill you over your choice of doctor too everyone wants david Tennant, and i i I get it he's i love him so i can't even pick between him and matt well i haven't seen matt yet but um matt is i just love matt Matt as an actor matt is really good because he plays he's the youngest person to have ever played the doctor and he plays the oldest doctor in the sense that like when you look at him even though he's young in body he plays somebody who you you could believe he was a thousand years old at that point like he's got a like just an old man and a young man's body vibe to him that works for the character at that point like he's seen enough he's kind of over it but he's got like a Kind of like an, uh, you know, like a grandpa that's kind of like, you know, lighthearted or whatever. Yeah. He, you know, he can still, you know, be fun or whatever. Um, but he's, he, I liked his portrayal in, in different ways. And he was at toward the end of his run, there was a lot better episodes too than there 
April and any attendance seasons. Um, Cause Moffat could actually write pretty well. Yes. So, all right, folks, sorry for that detour, but I, I did, I'm yeah. mighty proud of myself that I made it through. I'm, the... I'm proud of you too, that you started that and actually got into it. Yeah. Um, Daphne has been trying to get me into it for a while and then uh, one of my other friends was like, you would totally like it. It's right up your alley. And I was like, I think the fuck it's not. And so the first season, I pushed through that first season because that, or not first, but, you know, second first season. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. does the Whovians, as they're called, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, um, made it through that. Loved the doctor. Didn't really like the writing of the stories. Um, David Tennant showed up. I was like, okay. We'll see what's going on, and I've been happy ever since. So, don't watch it much past when Smith's left because I, I liked the Doctor after him, but the writing was uh, went off the rails, and then it, the show just went bad after that. So, yeah. it's probably it's probably best to end with Matt Smith, to be honest. If you want to keep the show <laughs> as a good show in your mind, well, I heard Tenet is back uh, as of 2023, and the same uh, director that was directing him. Yeah, and it's it's really bad. It's it like is? every every woke thing that you no. can imagine possible they have put into the show. They even have the doctor admit that it's because of his male presenting persona that he makes all the bad decisions that he does. Oh my god. They say god. that they say that in the show. I'm just throwing that out there. Don't 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 watch New Who. Okay. It's, uh, the, New the Who. Episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a fucking Dr. C's character. <laughs> uh we have uh going back to this movie however <laughs> we're, and we we're back everyone amy L- lalonde plays tracy thurman the wannabe starlet and texan and i throw it out there because uh, they they i mean everything's bigger in texas mm-hmm. even overacting apparently so yes. i mean they really gotta put that texas spin on her to make her stand out if everything was bigger in texas she would have a nicer set of tits i said it <laughs> Uh, Chris Violet plays Gordo Thorson, who's Tracy's boyfriend, ends up being Zombie Chow in the movie. Uh, zombie and, Chow? <laughs> yeah, and it, and it, it's really, really because of uh, the main character. Like, that's the stupidest scene in the movie. We'll get to it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, is, that, is that the guy that died in the shower? Uh, no, that is not. That is the guy that was bit in the hospital. Uh, by a zombie that uh, we'll just get into it now. A zombie walks in front of the cameraman, you know, or Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason does nothing to stop it. I don't know why it didn't attack Jason. Yeah. Apparently, because he was filming, he was yes. immune. Uh, and it walks right at Gordon, bites him on the shoulder, and then oh. gets killed by the the, the little nerdy kid uh, played by Joe uh, Denicall. Yes. And uh, that's where he was like, uh, you know, looking at uh, t- Tony and was like, does this look like he's alive yes. to you? That was a good scene. And, and then right after that, uh, Tracy's with him and she's like, don't, uh, you know, don't kill him. Okay. Uh, maybe he won't turn and he does. And then they have to, and they have to bury him anyways. Yeah. So, okay. I, I remember that now. Uh, Tatiana Maslany is in this movie playing Mary Dexter as a religious suicide, uh, victim slash zombie. Um, this is She-Hulk, folks. Oh my the, God, the is it? The girl who's driving the, the van that they're, the RV that they're in it, it is, will grow up to be She-Hulk. Oh That's God. who this is. And she's just as poor in this show as she is, <laughs> or this movie as she is in She-Hulk. Nothing changed. Hey, listen. What if if you ever get a chance, watch Orphan Black since you're watching, you know, British stuff now. It's a British sci-fi show about uh, like a cloning program they did on her in particular. She plays like four, uh, maybe more than that maybe, but at least five different versions of herself that's been cloned and they all have different personalities. She's good in Orphan Black. Mm. She's terrible in this and she's terrible in She-Hulk. So I don't know. It must have been a good director. Okay. I don't, I mean, I don't know what happened, but she, it's like bad, good, bad again, you know? Okay. Um, I mean, let's not get overboard here. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not jumping on a ton of British comedies. <laughs> it's not a comedy. It's a or sci-fi drama. British anything. It's, let's just leave it at that. Uh, you guys are lucky. I'm watching Dr. Who. That's it. Uh, we've got Philip uh, Riccio playing uh, Ridley Wilmot, the rich kid who ends up being the mummy zombie at the end of the movie. He's in a zombie outfit at the beginning of the movie. He never takes it off. Yeah. I don't know he, why they've been out for multiple days, but he's still in it at the end of the movie. 
Yeah, and Change acting really weird too. Like I was like, something ain't right. Um, and then we we get to see the zombies in the pool, which was I loved that. I thought that was so cool looking. <laughs> Uh, they had a lot of technical uh, issues trying to get that that scene to work, and we'll get into that a little okay. bit too when we talk about the movie. Uh, and then, like I said, Joe Denikoff plays Elliot Stone. He's the nerdy film editor slash technician. Uh, he was actually an Arrow for a bit. I uh, love another Arrow. CW, or it's a CW show that's yes. that's in Canada. It was good until it uh, wasn't. So- Isn't that all CW shows? It was good until the third season, and then it went off the rails after that point. Yeah, I uh, think the first I... two seasons are all the that's all it's worth watching. And the first season of The Flash was all that was worth watching of that show, really. And then uh, none of uh, Batwoman was worth watching whatsoever. Oh yeah, D- that ended real fast. That didn't even make it to a second season, did it? No, they did come back with the second oh, season. Shit. They replaced uh, Ruby Rose after she br- literally broke her neck on the filming filming yeah. the show. She she ducked out. They replaced her. If if you're going to go from a, a lesbian in the new society of wokeness here, the uh, the woke Olympics, if you're going to go, if you're going to one up having a lesbian in your show, how do you go up from that? A white lesbian, you go to a black lesbian. That's that's how they they up the ante on the second season, and it just kind of died after that. So, uh, anyways. Synopsis, a group of film students from University of Pittsburgh are out in the woods filming a horror movie when reports come over the radio announcing the dead have started returning to life and attacking the living. Jason Creed, the director, decides to document their day-to-day activities. What transpires is eventually edited together by Jason's girlfriend, Deborah, in the hopes that their struggles might help others. Jason is an emotionless voyeur. Deborah has a lot of anger to harbor, and Tony is getting shit done. Where will you be when the end begins? That's 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 not bad. Yeah, that's another tagline yeah. they threw in there. The zombie season's course, killing it with taglines. And then, of course, they threw this on some of the DVDs, A New Vision of Terror from the Legendary Filmmaker. That's just a marketing promo. That's not even a tagline. I don't even know why they would call mm. it a tagline. Uh, quotes here. Elliot Stone, after Ridley drives off a of Francine, fucking mummies get all the girls. <laughs> oh, my God. That is stupid. Uh, well, the, that's the thing. A lot of the actual dialogue this movie is not great, to be perfectly yeah. honest. Some of it was funny, though. And I'll, I'm going to wait to see if you're if it's in here. One of the quotes uh, that I remember. Deborah. Uh, Jason always wanted to be a document, uh, documentary filmmaker, but for his senior class project, he decided to try to make a horror film. That's what he was shooting at uh, on that first night, the night when everything changed. That's, of course, how she starts the movie out and kind of gives all that. Uh, and she and a lot of these are her quotes because, you know, it's voiceovers from her or she's talking to Jason, you know, through the camera. Uh, it's funny. You spend so much time resenting your parents, separating yourself, building your own life. But as soon as the shit hits the fan, the only place you want to go home or to go is home. Um, that's uh, that's a decent line. I mean, it makes sense in context. If he's out, you know, in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, assuming you don't have just like the most traumatic, worst parents ever you'd want to at least go see that they're safe. Yeah. Uh, Deborah, I'm just trying to get home too, okay? Like Mary, and I'm wondering why my boyfriend has a camera plastered to his face, which symbolizes kind of how their whole relationship is yeah. through most of the movie. Uh, Andrew Maxwell, you're stuttering, Mr. Creed. Don't try to speak, just shoot. Shoot your picture. Shoot for as long as your hard drive holds out, as long as you have power. That's whenever he gets really pissed at Jason in the hospital yeah. because Jason didn't bother to move away from the fuck. He he plugged in. That's one of the scenes that kills me in this movie. He plugs in the fucking camera and stands there with it. Uh, doesn't help Mary whatsoever while she's sitting there, you know, with a bullet lodged in her face or wherever it's at. Yeah. And and even nearly gets killed by a zombie that rolls off the table behind him because the fucker won't even move. With I mean, it's just like, come on. There's nobody that would be that. I mean, be that way if they had like if they, even if they were trying to film everything. Yeah. I mean, they would have dropped it and you'd see like you know maybe their feet from a distance and them fighting or whatever they're you know to kind of save themselves. Uh, and then finally, Deborah to Jason, if it didn't happen on camera, it's like it didn't happen, right? And that's when she gets pissed. Then she found that other camera in the hospital, and she's filming him, you yeah. know, because 
she was screaming. That's that's where it starts with her and Tony is because Jason hears a scream. He sits there for a second. Should I go help? Should I? Yeah. But I can't because the camera's, you know, not charged yet. And then she comes back. She's covered in blood. And he's like, oh, God, what happened? She's like, it's fine. Tony was there for me. And then I'm like, oh, shit. You know, that that's some uh, relationship, uh, tr- you know, this uh, romantic triangle going on now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because if any of us were in that situation, it would be blatantly obvious. Like, if you guys were fighting zombies and I was sitting there painting pictures because, you know, guys, we need serenity in our lives. And this is how we're going to get serenity. <laughs> So while you're out there fighting, I'm going to bring us happiness by painting these pictures. Like y'all would be pissed. Yeah. I mean, and, and that, and that's what I'm saying. Even Andrew, you know, Dr. Maxwell, professor Maxwell, when he comes back, he's pissed at Jason. He's like, just, he's like, just, uh, keep filming your little picture. You you clearly are not going to help anybody, you know, and it's, it's a pretty damning statement about the the protagonist. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want to even call him that because he doesn't really do anything other than observe through the camera. I don't know, though, if we, let's say we're in this situation, and we make it, and the actual National Guard has things under control, and we're good again, and it's like, wow, somebody who was with us that was filming the whole time does have all of that on camera. Are we grateful? Are we, like, it's Here's probably not thing. something we want to relive, though. I don't, I don't know. Here's the thing. A, what is he filming that's actually helping people? Because he gets on the internet multiple times before it goes down at the end of the movie. And uh, other people are uploading, like, you know, little little clips and stuff to kind of help others out. Somebody uploads the yes. undoctored footage of the, the very first zombie, you know, uh, at the beginning of it when Romero does a cameo. Uh, he's that cop telling them to shut down the cameras or whatever. But they come out of, like, this domestic disturbance, and they've got the two people on uh, – uh, gurneys or whatever in body bags and they start moving yeah. and the EMT opens it up and they get their throats ripped out and then the camera woman gets attacked and then the cameraman doing what you would normally do in an actual situation like that drops his camera runs over to her and tries to yes. you know stop actually bleeding. help yes yeah um somebody did that jason didn't do it no uh there's the one lady in china or whatever or japan where which you know i'm sorry japan, yeah. I, I, I can't remember which Asian it was country tokyo it is uh, and, uh, she's saying the dead, dead have come back, shoot them in the head, the dead have come back or whatever. Yes. So she's actually giving good advice on how to survive. And the fact that the shit sits fan and telling people that it's even spread there. Yes. Uh, Jason is just filming drama between people. And yes. I, I mean, it's, it's a fine enough thing, assuming that it's a little blip, like, you know, say you have an accident or you have like an emergency, there's shit's bad for a little while, say a few months to a year, but then things comes back. Let's use COVID as an example, yeah. you know, that drug out way too long. After that's over with, people want to see the day-to-day how, you know, it's like, you know, just kind of like, well, how was it for people back then? It's more like a history type thing. That's when you benefit from what Jason's filming. Yeah. There's no hint that this world's ever getting back to that point. Correct, like, yeah. He, so, he is, he's hopeful. He's still... He's still got something in him. He's optimistic. Obviously, he's optimistic that nothing's going to happen to him because he's filming. Instead of holding a gun, he's holding a camera. So he's shooting the wrong weapon. I don't see what his film will actually accomplish for anybody. Even and then Deborah, she's only doing it because she feels bad about what happened to Jason and everything else. It's more like for posterity's sake, this needs to get out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't help anybody because at the point that the movie ends the world's full on Romero apocalypse. I mean, this is supposed to take place at the same time. Not a living dead took place. Just, I mean, you got, it's a different time period. Yes. You know, you can think different, you know, parallel universe, but it's a, it's the first days of the, you know, zombie apocalypse. There's, uh, one might th- say it's the last days. Well, the last <laughs> days of humanity, the first days yeah. of the zombie apocalypse. So there is no point his movie like nobody will get any benefit from it assuming they could even access it which you've got to have infrastructure that's going to be gone you know pretty soon which is the one thing that Romero highlights in his own movie which is his best movie to me Day of the Dead the breakdown of society and what happens whenever the last few 
survivors are left, there's going to be no infrastructure for him to access his video. And if they did, oh, okay, these people had a lot of drama and then they died. Like, what does that help anybody that he filmed any of this? It's entertainment. There's <laughs> going to be very little of that in the world. <laughs> he filmed They'll have a all the human... entertainment they want by going out and... Shooting them, that's true, yeah. They, uh... they will... They will be living the the. I mean, it's there's there's a. I mean, in a world like that, there you would want escapism. You would want to to have video of a better time. You know, like, hey, what was the world like before it fell all to shit? Okay, yeah, this is awesome. You don't want this. I mean, because I mean, the the people that survived, this is their story. They would have had something similar. Yeah, I just don't see. I just don't see what hit what he was actually accomplishing with any of his stuff. He wasn't trying to give them information about how to survive. It was just like, this is how things were in the beginning of the apocalypse. And it's like, okay, that, uh, that's a thing, you know? Uh, he filmed a, you know what he filmed was a human horror. <laughs> well, kind of, I mean, pretty much. I mean, there was, uh, and, and there were scenes in this, too. I mean, we're kind of getting the review of the movie, but we've kind of been discussing it the entire time. I, 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 I'm really... Romero, it surprised me that Romero is so hopeful in that scene halfway through the movie where they come upon, like, the, the, the black guys that have, like, t- kind of taken on, like, the defense of their own, like, little community, and they kind of hoarded up supplies and all that. Yeah. Like... The, those guys were extremely nice to them without requiring anything, you know, whatsoever. And, I, and I'm not saying anything you know, racially or anything like that. If it was a group of white guys, uh, Deborah's fairly good looking. There's no yes. way that any of those guys would be hitting on her. You know, it's like we've got to repopulate, you know. I mean, they it, it's like the soldiers at the end of, you know, uh, 28 Days Later. They they have a point. Like, if, the, if there's no population, then what's the point of humanity? So... I mean, not to say that they're, they were right about the kid that they had, but that's a whole other argument. But, um, but, I mean, they didn't make a move on her. They didn't, like, you know, uh, ask them for any of their supplies. Now, the National Guard did, and that made some sense. But the National Guard still left them with weapons, which, I mean, I guess, you know, I, I'll, I'll take Maxwell's description of that to be, you know, a little bit, Uh, closer to home because they're like well they're soldiers they know that if they leave you without weapons that that's as good as dead so at least they gave us a way to defend ourselves even if they took our food and our you know water and everything else that which was wild because i'm like like the humans in this were oh go ahead (laughs) no go ahead what was wild about it it was wild that they when that happened when the quotation mark national guard came and took all their shit except for their camper and their guns yeah. That, I was like, okay, I mean, like, I get it. Like, you want them to live, but, like, maybe they didn't feel like they could potentially be a threat to them. I, I guess. I I mean, I just feel like that the humans in this were, like, way too, uh, I mean, at times were, like, nicer than they would have been. And like, yeah. And I, I mean, because you got panicked people. The, uh, the, the only one who struck me is, uh, it was funny but it wasn't, I mean, but it was a little bit closer to what I would imagine a person to be was the uh, Amish guy, the the deaf Amish guy. Because, oh, yeah. like, he didn't trust them, but he also didn't want to leave them out there to die, so he was trying to help them, and then they, he ended up getting, you know, eating, yeah. anyway, so it didn't really matter. Um, what lines did you think were funny in the movie? Because <laughs> you mentioned that, but you haven't, we haven't circled back to it. It was when they were first in the camper, and they're heading out of town or to wherever Deborah wanted to go. And they encounter the first zombie on the road, I guess, which is they it's like a state trooper and they're not sure the if state he's, trooper. Yeah, yeah, they're not sure he's dead. And when they realize he's dead, one of the guys goes, I think he wants more than your license and registration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so fucking stupid. One of them. One of them has a stupid line, though. It's like, oh, yeah, he's got one of those hats. What was that? What? And they, they're sitting like, what does that mean? Like, and, and you know, it's like. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, you don't know what a state trooper is? Like, this is dumb, you know? Yeah. Um, no. Now, I'll give them, I'll give them benefit on this. That effect was awesome of that burnt zombie. Yes. That was actually a really good effect. I think the zombies I mean, look pretty damn good. Budget. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the zombies look good. Now, this movie doesn't get a lot of shit because it used digital blood splatter and instead of the, the squibs that they used to use, you know, like the little blood packs that would just, like, 
explode like upon like a press of a button. They didn't do that. They did all digital effects on the blood. And, and if you pay close enough attention, you can see how awful it looks like a PlayStation game. Whenever yeah. The blood splatters, I didn't, but. I didn't notice, but I don't know why I didn't notice. I did I was a little tense during the you're film. You're probably paying more attention to the. You're probably paying more attention to the zombies, honestly. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> um, they did get Nick. They did get Greg Nicotero, who did The Walking Dead and uh, Land of the Dead, and, and some of uh, Romero's earlier films. They got him to come in, and like he did like some cheap work for George because he was friends with him, and that's why they got the zombie effects. Actually, he. He's a zombie in the movie. He's that zombie doctor that was they see when they got Mary Wilde in there and uh, the one that gets shot by Tony, whoever has the gun at that time. Oh, okay. Uh, so that was Greg Nicotero that was in that scene. Um, now, visually, I mean, you wouldn't think this, but it makes sense. It actually took more work to make this movie look the way that it did than it would a normal zombie movie because they could not hide a lot of stuff they could normally hide because they were with that camera up on the zombies. So they had to find uh, different ways to stuff the tubing and stuff that that normally is in there to punk, you know, to pump out what, you know, like some of the blood and stuff they do or like, you know, to get like the wound marks on the, on the zombies whenever they were attacked or whatever, they had to actually have somebody like, basically they had to have it all hid on the person themselves instead of having it like uh, set up in a certain way that the, the, the camera was not catching the person off screen that was feeding the effects. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So there was a lot of that going on in this movie that don't really get appreciated because you're just like, okay, they've done zombie effects before. It's like, yeah, but they didn't do them out in the open like this. So that's kind of how, you know, why it was a little bit tougher for them to get to, to, to do that. There was a little post production uh, going on. Yeah. Um, Going back to the the actual story though, other than like the idea of Jason's movie, like it's a it's a fairly basic story. They you know they this they have nowhere to go, but they got to get out of Pittsburgh because it's a majorly populated city that's you know being shut down. So they go out and the and Deborah's trying to get home. So it's like okay that that's a something. Let's go to her house. Yeah. And then they get there and everything's went to shit because her. Little brother, uh, ended, or her mom got attacked and then ate her and ate her little brother. And then they were both like, and was def, was like eating on the dad. And like when yes. they actually found them, um, they go from that, uh, scene, they, they run across, like I said, the one town where the, the guys have been like hoarding up all the supplies and taking over. They were the people that, I, George is making some kind of commentary there just about the haves and the have nots, but he's like, nobody ever gave us a second thought. And now we run this place and we're going to, you know, and there was a little bit of the co social commentary there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know. He's really comment on the national guard. The fact that they, you know, were, are villains. I don't know. Maybe that was like George trying to make a statement about like, you know, soldiers and something, or, I mean, cause they, the bad guys, are the soldiers in that movie. So, I yes. mean, he, he's always kind of had like an anti-war, anti-soldier type mentality. Um, and and he, and he brings those same characters back to in Survival, which is the weird thing. That exact group of National Guard members, uh, at least that main guy that told him to shut the fucking camera off yeah. or whatever that, that was all weird, he's one of the main characters in Survival of the Dead. Interesting. Like that, he's, that exact character is. It's like you follow him from the point after he robbed them on. Okay. You know? Um, and then they kind of leave there and then they end up going to that mansion, which is, would be an awesome place to hold up if it wasn't for the fact that the, uh, the main character or the, the rich guy who's still in the mummy outfit days after he should have already changed out of it is acting really weird. The girl that he disappeared with, she's gone, uh, killed all of his family or all of his family are zombies. And he's just kind of leaving them lingering in the pool now. And uh, he's been bit, and you see it in the one scene where he goes to open up the the, the door to the pool. Uh, there's blood dripping out from under his bandages, and he turns into a zombie, ends up killing the uh, the kid who's the technician who decides to take a shower and uh, gets electrocuted because of it. Uh, That's what happened. Just... I was wondering what, how, what exact, I missed what happened. Can you explain to me? I think that he had like a hair dryer or something close by, and when the 
the zombie came in there like he was trying to push against him, but they both fell into the tub or, or the bath that he was, you know, yeah. uh, running and like the air, the hair dryer that was still plugged up or whatever it was fell in with them both. And of course it shocked both of them, which it didn't affect the zombie, but yeah. it, it got him, uh, which that is a cool effect in the movie. I'll give them this going back to the, the hospital, the defibrillators that Deborah yes. did on the zombie nurse and her eyes exploded. Didn't kill her. Yes. Didn't fry her brains, but it exploded her eye. That was a cool scene. That was cool. Yeah. A lot of actually cool visual scenes. Uh, I did like the scene where, um, what's his name? The nerdy guy did uh, kill the vampire in front of everyone. Was like, is he dead? Is he dead? And then he, he pokes, not pokes it, but like he impales it through the brain and when he pulls the spike or whatever the pole back up brain comes with it oh yeah i thought that looked so cool yeah visually they they did he did a good job i mean and and george and a lot of people give him credit for this george was always i mean those were all george's ideas like he was always like how about we try this we've not done this on camera defibrillator their eyes explode Mm -hmm. that was i mean george was brilliant at coming up with like little gags like that that's what he called them gags to you know kind of make the zombies you know uh more entertaining whenever they were taking them out um but that whole scene at the end of it when they're in the mansion, I don't I don't know what he was trying to get at with that. I mean, it was like they had false security in like this rich, you know, house, but like the the, the dead still found them. Cause he, he has that whole rich versus the poor that he did in land versus the or, or land of the dead. So it's almost like he was coming back to the class thing again and at the end of the movie. It the movie has mixed metaphors. It's not like he's really got anything majorly to say, you know, through any of it other than that he's doing the uh, um, found footage style, which he was just trying his hand at. Yeah, uh, he did. I, he has. He he's on. He was on record saying that he wanted the found footage part of it. It was almost like he was making fun of the genre because he felt like it was. Uh, it was too. It, it took away something from the cinematic aspect of movies, and it was a little too on the nose. So this movie was kind of like his. Him being a little facetious about found footage and saying, look, anybody can do it. And it's a shitty, you know, like the, I mean, the protagonist, the camera person is not doing shit, you know, and that don't make any damn sense. But like, no, George, like even in other found footage that to a certain degree, they do get involved. I mean, like quarantine and wreck the cameraman at certain times tries to save the main girl. Who's the cat, you know, like the, the interview lady who's, I mean, he gets involved like Jason's the worst of all these found footage of just standing there. It's like, nope, can't get involved. That means that I'm influencing what I'm seeing here. It's like, nobody's like that. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that it would be a lot better um, in multiple films, even Blair Witch, where you see in Blair Witch, we probably do see this, but if they actually show the cameraman getting attacked and being able to, Maybe he's got the camera off to the side, but you still kind of see what's going on. And he's got a gun in the other hand, and he's ready to go at any given moment. Or he's got a gun on a holster or in his pocket, ready to go in case he does get attacked. They need to make it to where he's not Brad Pitt in, you know, what is it, Z? Not Z Nation, but... World War Z. World War Z, where he's not going to get attacked no matter what. Um, He needs to be attacked. It doesn't mean he gets bitten. It doesn't mean that anything happens. I know at the end, he does get attacked. But, like, throughout the entire film, nothing. Not even a little bit. I mean, even the rich kid, when he's a zombie, kind of looks at him, but then goes back to the girl. And I'm like, that doesn't... There's that scene. There's a scene where he's in the like the the town where the guys are hoarding the supplies, mm-hmm. and the one zombie that died of a heart attack or whatever. They they're trying to find him. When they do, he 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 comes toward Jason for a split second, and then turns toward uh, yeah. Tony, and then that's when Tony has to fight him, and then does that admittedly cool effect too, where he puts the acid on him, and it like yes, starts to melt his you know, brain that. away. That was kind of cool because I'm thinking, okay, can you? put that in some kind of squirt gun probably not because it's plastic but hear me out can you put that in something or maybe you just create these little glass bombs these mason jar bombs you know you could do that and yeah you, that would work yeah you hope that it pops over their head and that it melts their brain um do you think that maybe okay I can't smell anything still after my universal trip in may but when I could smell I could smell electronics. 
Um, I could smell like the computer, my uh, setup, my roadcaster that is my audio setup. I could smell that. It, I don't know. I, I can't describe this, but the back of a Nintendo when it's fucking blowing hot air out, okay? It's, yeah, it's kind of like that hot plastic, that, yes. that smell or whatever. Do you think it's possible that cameras get give off that? Maybe this bit, and it's not just any camera. It's a huge camcorder. You think it's possible that maybe that's kind of throwing off of these zombies? It might. It's my dumb explanation to explain the dumbness behind what's happening. No, no. If anything, that they would be, they'd be like, "What's that smell?" And they'd be like pulled toward him. Like the dumbest one in the movie is literally the one I mentioned. The hospital that gets me every time. It's that zombie walks past him. It's like yeah. it had the perk because he wasn't even looking at the thing. Like I mean, it was it was right there, but somehow because he had the camera, he was immune to it. You okay, know, it just one you know. one more then one more. Do you think I'm just gonna keep fucking softballing these at you uh do you think that maybe they're confused because they're not looking at a person because technically the camera is covering their face if you want to go that route then maybe that's like a very i mean most things operate if you want to suspension of disbelief is the main thing you want to keep with any movie. Uh, it's one thing to believe that dead bodies are coming back to life and come zombies. That's its own. You mm-hmm. have to accept that. Yes. Or you can't accept any of it, but that, and that's a huge leap, but it's minor things that break that down over the course of a movie. And it's a fact that, I mean, if you have to go to such depths to explain why the cameraman is immune to the zombies, uh, you have failed. I think what would have been better in the movie um, maybe not have one single person being like the cameraman throughout the entire movie. Maybe have it to where Jason started the movie, if you want to go that route. He gets killed partway through the movie because he's not paying attention and the zombies get to him. And then Deborah decides to finish this movie and she becomes the camera woman. Yeah. Uh, and it goes that way because that would make logical sense. Like, you know, Jason wouldn't be immune uh, to any zombie around him. She still feels the, you know, the, the, you know, obligation as his girlfriend uh, after he dies to complete his movie, and, and you know that gives a little bit, man. They get and actually, it, it adds more fear to the movie because in the movie as it is, he gets by so many zombies in the mm-hmm. movie that by the end you're just like, okay, he's not going to get that. Yeah, like even. Even in that scene where, I mean, let, let's just go right to the end of the movie, the mummy zombie. Uh, and has the option. They're both in close, close proximity between her, uh, him, the cameraman, Jason, and uh, the, the girl, Tracy, or whatever. And it goes after her. Doesn't even acknowledge him. Mm-hmm. Like, just keeps going after her. Yeah. And that makes... And, and only at one point in time when he says some line, or he says some, he yells oh, out cut. to it, does it turn... He, he, yeah, it turns around, and then it kind of stumbles away from Tracy. And I'm like... That, that's too much to suspend. Mm-hmm. Like the, at, at, at any point, since it was so close, it was closer to him in some of the scenes than it was to her because she was running away from it and he was kind of slowly creeping up on the, the zombie. It, it should have turned around and came after him. I mean, and it does eventually in, at the end, but it's it's too little too late at that point. I did kind of think of something. Um, <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh, but that's, you know, that's what I'm here for. Is that I feel like these zombies, they go back to kind of having the brain function of a toddler where they can move, not very well. They can function horribly. Um, They can eat and they bite. And that's what toddlers fucking do. And they don't really talk. They just mumble and make groans and fucking noises and shit. They stink. Um... (laughs) A lot, a lot of comparisons here that are matching up. Okay. Yes. So, th- okay. So this, the, hear me out. So then you play peekaboo with a toddler, and those stupid little fuckers think that you're fucking gone when you cover your face. <laughs> are you getting? Are you smelling what I'm stepping in? Uh, yeah, and it smells like shit. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I agree. It. He doesn't have a it, face. It, if it was. If they set it up in the universe, yes. as much as hard as that is to swallow, 
that would that would make sense, but they don't set that up. There's no, nobody they else don't, that has the luxury. They don't set it up, but that's me setting it up and breaking it down at the same time. Because You know, I could actually believe that line of thinking in Z Nation because yes. Z Nation's got the kind of humor that somebody could play <laughs> peekaboo with a zombie and it would work. Oh my god, that'd be so fucking funny. Peekaboo, where's Raina? <laughs> Can't see me. Oh no. I just I think the the biggest issue with the movie, uh, like I said, it would have been way better if they would have had it, it had it to where Jason would have died, and then there would have been a threat for the rest of the movie forever was actually filming with a camera. But the biggest issue is that George didn't understand the genre he was jumping into. Like he was so hell bent on making a commentary. Yeah. I think his other commentary was too is that people use the camera to distance themselves from what's going on. Yeah, and that's not a bad commentary no. because people do that. That's like they don't. I mean, you can see the worst things ever, and and I mean, if anything, history has proven him to be correct on this. You can see all kinds of bad shit on TikTok, YouTube, and all that, and people who are filming it are just they'll watch it happen. They won't, yeah. uh, and they they won't step in. They, it's like a bear's behind their friend. Like, nope, I'm going to film it. I'm going to film the bear running up on my buddy. Um, so he had a point in a sense, but I feel like that he was tr- it, it wasn't. He, he didn't think it through enough to make it like a cohesive like Mm-mm. narrative. No, I think he was primarily in it for the money. He knows what his name brings. You can't deny it. And he probably thought he didn't have to work as hard. Um, he, well, and he had to work harder to get the zombie effects to work. It, it, it's, it, it literally was like, I'm going to take the piss out of this genre. And it was like, okay, but you, you have to understand why the genre works. Mm-hmm. And he didn't really demonstrate that he knew why Which it Which is insane because he did. created the fucking genre. Not, no, not the zombie genre, the found footage genre. Oh, found like he, footage. Okay, he that makes sense. Ste- he was stepping in what you were putting down a while ago. Like, oh, okay. he was stepping in the shit, you yeah. know? <laughs> I mean, that's really the biggest issue I have with the movie. It's like, it, it, it. It's entertaining. It will. I mean, the characters they're they're not great, but like they they serve enough of a purpose that you know, and, and not all of them are annoying. So I mean, it's fine to follow them around, but when the movie's all said and done, it's just like you watch it and you're like, okay, it, it's it's just it's it's the way that he went about the found footage part of it that just doesn't really work overall. It's he would have been better to have made a actual film and kind of like. I, you know, go a different route if he's going to make some social commentary. Because then he, like, going along social commentary, I hated this scene at the end of it. And a lot of people on the internet went the same route with as I did. The movie would have been fine if you would have had it where it ended right at Deborah's sake, picking up the camera, you know, her and the rest of them are in the, the panic room and mm-hmm. they're getting ready to, and they are surrounded by zombies now. And the gun is getting, playing. Yes, and uh, and they're getting ready to make their way out because they have to they have to get out in the world. You know they can't just stay there forever. And they go throughout the door of the panic room, and that's how the movie ends. It leaves it up for debate. Instead, they uh, Romero the way the end of the movie hinted that she got out of that situation scot free because she got to a video editing place somewhere and edited in this one last scene that Jason filmed along the way or found along the way on the internet of these good old boys shooting zombies that are hung up on, you know, and it's just like, this makes no sense with the rest of the movie. This has no bearing on the movie. This is just, uh, this just one little scene to poke at rednecks for whatever reason. Yes. And it, I mean, and he did it so much better in night of the living dead. Like it's, it's basically that scene again, but done poorly. There was no reason for it. Yeah, it was dumb because she's like, do humans even deserve to live? She sounds like a liberal that's like, they're zombies, they're people. People, you know, zombies can identify as people, and zombies deserve equality, and we should treat them yeah. better. And they probably act like people better if we treated them as such. Yeah, and that's how it comes off. And, it, yes. and, and that's George saying all that. And it's like, this political message is yeah. totally stupid and has no sense. No, I mean. they can't be reasoned with. Again, toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> now now you're saying toddlers and liberals are, are similar <laughs> liberals can't be reasoned with either look at a toddler is a toddler and there's a reason they're not socially like they're not mature enough to understand that people that are adults that choose to act like toddlers have the ability they just lack and that's, the... and that's both sides extreme right extreme left they're both you can't talk to them uh-uh, they it's, cannot I be mean, 
<laughs> they cannot be reasoned with. And much like a toddler, the only difference is a toddler has an excuse. A zombie yeah, doesn't yeah. even have an, I mean, a zombie has an excuse too. Yeah. And then I, I don't, just that, that final scene, it just takes, I mean, that movie would have been so much better if it just them trying to break out of the, the panic room. And that was how the movie ended. That would have been I, cool. I, I just don't understand. I, it, and and if he wanted to like put a coda on it, you know, to show how somebody got the the footage, he could have had a scene where she was, you know, in front of some other survivors or something, and it's like this is the movie that Jason wanted you to see, yeah, or something. It would have made any, it wouldn't made any goddamn sense, but he that would have at least wrapped up the movie, you know. Yeah, um, I do like how he got his little explanation of I've been given the opportunity. I liked it because in that scene, and you may not have liked it, but he looked very bright eyed. He looked very optimistic. He had this. He really thought that things were going to be okay. Um. Uh, now, like I said, it would have, I feel like it would have been better if they still had showed him struggle, you know, like he had to help. Like if they showed him picking, grabbing cans of food or grabbing some, you know, luggage, and everything, maybe he's got the camera strapped onto his shoulder and the camera's just kind of going wonky showing, you know, things. And you don't really up. see that much. No. Which yeah. Is, which is why that, that end scene of Savage Land is so much better mm-hmm. than how this movie was portrayed is because the cameraman is freaking out and like he's barely getting any and, and, yes. you, and you're annoyed at the cameraman because what the fuck I don't I want to see what that was but in his panic he was not worried about the camera no. anymore he was worried about his own fucking life exactly you know? so uh it would have been cool too if at the very end you actually see a zombie getting bashed in the head with the camera because it's like okay I'm in so much danger I can't this has to be a weapon now I'm, I'm going to give you credit. That would have been a perfect way to end this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, and like, it's that she breaks out of the panic room and all you see at the last minute is just the, the yeah. focus of the camera smashing into a zombie's head. Hell yeah. And that's how it ends. See, I can you make know? movies. <laughs> I can do things. Uh, all right. Just to finish this on out, the acting, like, Ugh, it's, it's horrible. It's fine. I it mean, was horrible. It, 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 it's pretty. Uh, uh, Maxwell was the only one in the movie that I felt like was actually yes. acting. To is a that the degree. older guy? The older guy, the yes. bow and arrow. Yes. I don't. Okay. I, now he was great. I, I absolutely agree with that. I feel like everyone else was just like a, um, you know, Jason was awful. Jason was a non-entity. I guess that was what he was supposed to be, but yes. he he wasn't that great. He wasn't great at all. Deborah was uh, very much. Uh, she came off as a Mary Sue. Kind of. And rest and resting bitch face. That yeah. was her two, you know. Yeah. The uh, blonde, everything's Tony, better. And Tony was Texas. all right. Yeah. Tony was all right. I mean, the skeptic turned hero at the end. He was okay. He was okay. I think the probably I mean, the it, best it, one was, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Elliot. Elliot, to me, was one of the better characters. Yeah. I mean, he, as far as playing a, a kind of a character, like a nerdy character, yes. he... he Stepped into that role. So, um, but, but yeah, yeah no, let, let's just, let's compare it to Savage Land. God. With, an, with, with a guy who's not even an actor. Yes. The, 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 the guy, the main character in that. The photographer. That it, the photographer was a photographer and, and his crying and his acting in those scenes where they're filming him and, you know, he's locked up and they're interviewing him way more powerful than anybody in this movie. Even, even Maxwell, like Maxwell was fine for what he was doing. But, I mean, a photographer beat all these people. Well, you know why? Because he's Latin. He's passionate. <laughs> he's very, and we're very passionate about the things we get into, which can either make us look crazy or loving or very upset. So I think that's so that, probably that why that he explains why when a That explains why when a Latina girlfriend slash wife, or wife uh, it, it gets a little stabby stabby. Mm-hmm. It's the passion. It's they're passionate. That, that you're, Yes. Yeah. That's what they don't call it crimes of passion for nothing. Very, very passionate. And like, like what's her name said on Modern Family? I'm Latin. I get to feel everything. You know, she was at Diddy's freak off parties, right? Woo, girl. Some shit is about to. Okay. But like, are they all freak offs? Where is every single party that he ever threw a freak off? Because I have to believe that. There are some movie stars that have no fucking idea and they are sweating their dicks off right now because they're like, I don't remember or recall any of that. And then there's the ones that know that they did wrong. 
I don't I, I don't know. I'm just saying that she was linked. Uh, there was uh, there was another Latina actress or whatever that was linked to it. But I, I'd, I'd have to, but I know Kevin J-Lo. Hart for, for sure was at a freak off. Like Ooh, they got footage of him at a freak off. Oh man, it's about to go. I love that Fifty Cent is so involved with this too. He like was at, he's he like, was at those parties too, which is really weird. Um, maybe, I, but, but that see, makes, that's where but, I'm but, telling you there was probably quotation mark normal ones and then there was ones that they thought he was cool like oh hey man you want to we're gonna oh yeah and then he's like "Uh uh-uh the the fact that he's the fact that he's been you know speaking about Diddy all these years makes me think that you're right that there is like you know division there but how do you figure out which ones were actually freak offs and which ones just you know Parting it up. And that's going to be very, very, very hard because we're talking about actors. They're very good at their jobs. So, you know, not all of them are actors, though. But I'm pretty sure when it comes to the victims, that's what they're going to be relying on. Um, And then, of course, actual evidence. I could see Sophia being like maybe getting out of it if they actually go after her being the argument that she... Uh, was coerced into it thinking that, or that, you know, that whole like Weinstein of it all. Like mm-hmm. she was told that it, if she either had to engage in, you know, the activities or her job would not exist or something that, along those or lines. Or she didn't partake. She was there. She was like, nope. And they were like, cool. But if you tell anybody, we will kill you. We will kill your son. Like, yeah. and her that, son I mean, means the- everything to her. So that's, that's the only ways that that's one of the few ways she gets out of it. Now, a few other people that's been linked have been people who have had redemption arcs in the last few years. So I don't know if they, maybe they were in on it and then they got out of that and they, cause I mean, very, you know, vocally Christian now they're, they've turned yeah, their lives Mace. around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know what, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's a mess and it's just going to get worse unless he gets Epstein and there's that whole, yeah. you know, that's very likely that's going to happen. Oh, so. yeah, definitely. <laughs> Anyways, back to the movie, though. Um, I was not impressed by the acting very much. Uh, it was okay, though. Um, I'm really glad they got rid of Mary at the beginning of the movie. She was just, oh, God. I, I'm she, like, you're so she dramatic. She was so bad. Yeah, not good she, at Modi. She literally... She, they gave her George gave her one thing. You're hyper religious. That's all she yeah. operated on. Like, Named Mary. You know. um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I do like about this movie not necessarily having to do with actors, but yeah, technically because zombies the zombies are actors. Um, I like how this movie wasn't saturated with zombies. I like yeah, when it's it, not saturated because you still have the fear. You don't know what it's what's around the corner. Like when the kid attacked her. Um, in in her house when she went to when what's her name Deborah went to her family home and the kid jumped. Oh on yeah, her. and her little brother jumps that out was or whatever. Fucking yeah. amazing! And then when he got killed, that was hella cool. That looked so fucking good. Uh, another scene that took them a long time to get to work, and you know, based on how they were shooting the movie, yes. because they they tried to get the kids to like hop up to a certain area and then have it work and it. And working with a kid, it took them forever to get it to work out. Like So that's one of the yeah. scenes that took them a long time to figure. I don't understand why the guy that we seem to like the most. Um, the, Maxwell. The, the, Maxwell. Why he chose a bow and arrow. It's not like it was a crossbow. I feel, And I feel like you can't use a bow and arrow at super close range. Um, you, you have to ha- be able to have time. Zombie, these zombies were kind of fast. They weren't crazy slow but they weren't crazy fast. But if you were in a small room, you really don't have time to whip out the arrow, line it up. He's one of the few characters that actually gets an arc in this movie Mm -hmm. to a certain extent or some background. And he explains it. He was in the military. Uh, He, he hints that some of the stuff he did with guns, um, he would rather not relive, you know, by using it even on zombies, uh, hinting that he was, you know, asked to kill like maybe even women and children, you know, at war. Yeah. So, uh, or, or, you know, just in general. And so he said that his favorite memories was at an archery range, you know, when he was a young schoolboy, and he was really good at like, you know, shooting that way. So that's reason he decided that that was going to be his defense was something that he, that he, fondly remembered from childhood and was still deadly as opposed to like guns that, you know, only made him remember like basically PTSD type memories. So yeah. that, 
that was kind of their explanation and it and it's actually smarter to have weapons like that because guns make noise and they draw more zombies. Yes. So, I mean, it's, you know, but I agree with you. Even though crossbows are harder to reload than arrows, um, it they're, they might be a little bit easier to use like in a closer proximity than, you know, cause you still have to have time. You have, yes. to have the, the range to draw back. Yes. You don't get to, um, it's not automatic or anything. So yes, that's just as difficult, if not more. However, if there's only one zombie in the room, which in this movie, this is how it would have been. Cause there was no oversaturation of zombies. You have time to reload one and have it ready to go. Should you need it? Obviously you have to be careful, but that's like any weapon that's loaded. I will say this. If you go back and you look at the history of the Western United States and the Cowboys versus Indians or Native Americans, uh, they have the whole, um, uh, you know, they have compared like their weaponry. And I mean, of course, like guns now, you know, semi auto and automatic or, you know, obviously going to be like somebody who's shooting arrows. But back in those days when they had single loading guns, like, I mean, you were much better off to have a bow and arrow because even within, like, a shorter distance that a pistol would work, they could fire off and have, like, you know, 10 shots in the time that it would take somebody to, yeah. to load, even with cartridges, you know, not t- talking like black powder, but with cartridges, like, they can maybe get off three shots to, like, 10 arrows. So if you're yeah. good enough with a bow and arrow, you can actually do some major damage with it. Yeah, I, I can see that, and if he was, he was. Uh, you can also get your, your fucking... Uh, well, you can get your arrow back. Your ammo. Yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, they do, like, you know, yeah. start to wear down and break, which never affected Daryl Dixon. I know nope. he's the ultimate zombie killer. We've, we've got a... <laughs> we got a fan that is waiting. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know he's the ultimate, but he always gets his crossbow bolts back, but eventually they would snap, break. You wouldn't be able to pull them back out. I mean, that, you know, he would eventually start losing ammo every once in a while. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a contrivance there. <laughs> and then they, especially the, the Walmart special that he was carrying. Uh, I don't believe that would be as, as durable as maybe like a, a more military grade crossbow, but it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, we'll save the discussion on our thoughts until after the trivia. Anything that you want to bring up about the movie before we get to trivia? No, I believe I am ready for the trivia. <laughs> Uh, and you did mention that you didn't really hear the music. Uh, yeah. But I, I did I did hear it swelling at times, and I'm just like, yet another thing that George did not understand <laughs> about found footage. He did not understand the assignment. Uh, in the warehouse, when the group is searching the RV for the missing dead body, you can hear a television report in the background. The report is taken directly from the original Night of the Living Dead. I thought I recognized that. I was telling Noah to shut up at the moment. <laughs> Uh, it begins on the same day as Night of the Living Dead, although the setting has been updated to present day. Yeah. Uh, the concept for the film evolved from an idea that George had uh, earlier for a Living Dead television series, which would have begun on the same day as Night of the Living Dead. Now, I would have preferred to see a TV series. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you take the concept of Night, you know, where it's the first days of the zombie apocalypse and then kind of go from that, that would have been pretty interesting. We kind of got that with The Walking Dead. Uh, and then, of course, they never gave George any fucking credit for that. So, you know, fuck them. But I'm wondering uh, if you, okay, if, say, in George A. Romero's archives, he had already written maybe a script or a storyline or whatnot for a Night of the Living Dead series. If, let's say, you know, it comes across somebody who was meant to have it and is like, hey, we need to get this produced, and it was George A. Romero's wishes, can you still call that George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead, the TV series? They could possibly, because this is something that is happening. His daughter is, I believe it's his daughter, uh, is filming or is trying to get made his last script, which was called Twilight of the Dead, and they are actively working on that right now. Okay, that's that's interesting, because I was like, that would be kind of cool. Uh, I don't know how do you how you pronounce it. Uh, uh, post posthumously. Posthumous. Yeah. yeah. Um, postmortem. However, the how you want to fucking say it. <laughs> but I would imagine that she would slap his name on there yeah. just to, for the recognition, if nothing else. Absolutely, I mean, and as she should. Uh, they actually have a book of that, like, or uh, that might be the concept for that file. Final film. Uh, I've got it here. I only got like part way into it. 
somebody else had to, you know, kind of fill in the gaps. And I don't know if it was George. It could have been because of his political leanings or the person who's writing it. It gets a little wokey wokey at times, and it's a little bit hard to read because of it. Yeah. Um, like they they have a trailer park where like a, a young a black or younger black woman is like trying to make her way out of it, and there's like, you know, of course she's you know. Uh, the white folks in that that trailer park are you know just as ready to take her out as the zombies are. I'm like, okay, George, like you <laughs> come don't, on, that's, that's a little much. I mean, like, why? I don't understand because whenever I see the rednecks in his films, I'm thinking that they're the heroes. I'm like, awesome, we're safe. These are going to be the people that fucking save us. And and they they're the ones that in both dawn and in night that are establishing like some semblance of like order you know yes. at the beginning of the zombie apocalypse they have organization <laughs> they have weapons they have they all are working with each other that's not something you see all the time they welcome other people they're not unwelcoming at all they're like yeah, oh cool and- more people more power you know yeah because i mean you don't want to you don't want to add to the zombies, you know, well, they even wrench that in Z nation. It's just like, we don't want to kill somebody and just add to even more zombies. We need is all the people we can get, assuming that they're not psychotic, you yeah, know, because um, I, I, I don't me with a gun. It, it, I have a ton of guns, but me with a gun. I am not a self-proclaimed crack shot. My husband says that I am. He says, I'm really good. That's great. I'm glad he feels that way. I am better than him. I will say that. However, most that, women are. Yes. I've heard that too. That being said, I'm still going to be scared with that gun in my hand. I am going to kill zombies, and I will protect my children, and I will protect myself as best as I can, but I'm going to be scared. And if I see a fucking group of rednecks, I am like, I am going over there. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, guys. Do Um, you like Latinas? Uh, for the purposes of any government agents who might be listening to this, I lost all my boats in a tra- or all my guns in a tragic boat accident. Yes, uh, they are no longer on my person, so don't come after them. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Uh, anyways, this movie was shot over the period of twenty three days. Uh, the, uh, it was shot in long takes, uh, and George deliberately cast stage actors to get more emoting from them, you know, because of the way that it was being filmed. Zombies um, or the, the actors? No, the, the main actors, yeah. Okay. It's like they're kind of hamming it up in parts, and he did that deliberately to, for, I don't know, to make okay. them stand out more. Okay. Um, even before Land of the Dead was released, he was planning on a found footage take on the zombie apocalypse. Uh, the documentary within the film is called Death of Death. This is also the name of George Romero's four-part miniseries that he did for DC Comics. Uh, the zombie title, Toe Tags, which I actually have all those. Uh, it's it's not the best story ever. I actually feel like Marvel Zombies and Deceased are better zombie stories, but comic-wise, but yeah. it, it's, you know... Uh, despite its freeform style, George Romero found that the, the handy cam interpretation required even more planning than regular film, going back to what we said as far as the effects. Uh, Timeline-wise, this is not an official sequel to Land of the Dead as it takes place at the start of the zombie apocalypse and not in the middle of it. And Land is uh, the it, middle? Uh, I feel like Land is, like, way after. Like, they hint that Land takes place, just context clues, Land takes place after... Uh, or, well, it, the way that he develops the zombie, it's kind of weird because the the they're still functioning societies. So, yes, it would take place before day in that sense. But the concept of a smart zombie, uh, they're way smarter in land than they than And Bub was the ultimate zombie up until land. So the, the zombies developing, you know, some kind of uh, reemerging, you know, consciousness it, it should be day and then land. That's the only thing that'll make any sense okay. to me. I mean, that would make sense to it, me because I'm thinking night, dawn, day, land. That's the way I would normally interpret it. Okay. But the way that he sets up day is that there's literally like nobody left other than like a handful of humans. Like the zombies are run, run over every single, you know, even holdout, no matter where it's at. And he kind of sets up in a, land that you know there's certain pockets like you know pittsburgh and some other places where they've walled themselves in and you know kind of like they did in uh warm bodies where they could kind of hold out you know for a time yeah so, so it's kind of a mix mat uh you know mix of the two it kind of depends on how you interpret because i feel like the zombie should have been smarter in day if it, if it was farther along the timeline yeah and and he 
and Bub was the only one who was kind of hinting that anybody, any of them was getting any sense. And, and that's the only reason he had that was because he was being trained to bring his consciousness back out. Uh, in land, it's kind of like Big Daddy somehow figured out that he was, you know, vulnerable and mortal, even though the other zombies around him didn't know that. He had to teach them. Like, hey, motherfuckers, um, we can be taken out. Yeah, uh, do everything you can to protect your head because they can shoot you and do whatever they want otherwise. But if they get your brain, you're gone, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, which spe- speaking of that, in this, there was one cool scene, uh, total total CGI, but where one of the rednecks took out the zombie, but they only took out from his bottom jaw down. And so his eyes were still moving because his brain was not oh, taken yeah. out. But technically that's part of the spine and that you think that would have been taken out with the body, but you know. That's a repeat from Day because there's a scene toward the end of Day where they're escaping, and it, it, it's creepy. I love how he filmed it, but he, they're going through the tunnels underneath the, where they're at, mm-hmm. and there's zombies all around them, and you can hear them moaning in the distance, and they don't know how close they yeah. are. And they run up on one of them, and he's got a shovel, and he pops the head off, and the, and he does the cool fake where the head, the top of the head rolls through, the, and it, it's still its eyes are still moving yeah. whenever they pass by it. So it's kind of a repeat from Day in that sense. Um, this was released at the same time as Wreck from 2007, which is another found footage zombie movie that we will be covering. Uh, I don't know how you'll feel about those, uh, that quarantine. Are, are they zombies in those? Because they have rabies. They're technically yeah. infected humans, they but, they act, but they have zombies. But they're, they're kind of like the zombies from 28 Days Later in a mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, because I consider the zombies from 28. Infected humans, to me, are zombies. Um, because they, okay. there's, a, there's a way to spread it, um, and there is technically a way to take them out. I feel like every zombie should have a way to be taken out. So it bothers me when the zombies don't. <laughs> Which is the biggest issue with mm-hmm. the return of the living yes. dead, because no matter what you do to them, they're still there. I mean, technically, there's a way, but then it kind of gets retconned, and I don't know. Um, my thing is, what's my thing with zombies? I, I prefer them to be, like, to want to bite humans to eat them because I'm used to the brain thing, which is George A. Romero's. No. No, not what? He didn't he didn't he didn't do brains. He did flesh. Just, they, oh. they want to eat the flesh. Okay, my bad. Uh, re- return was the was brains. brains. Okay. I'm used to which the Which is funny because uh Z Nation does both. They'll they'll bite they'll eat each, every, every part yeah. every part of your body, but later when one of the one of the characters is kind of a pseudo zombie he starts to prefer brains because that you know that that that's that's really what they crave in the okay. series is they're trying to get brains. Okay. Um. So it's kind of a mix. Yeah, I kind of uh, lost sight of what I consider because there was a few that I'm like, this is not a zombie. Oh, the the weenie worms. That's not a zombie to me. <laughs> They're still infected humans, though. That I feel like yeah. that's a weird dividing line because uh, the zombies in um. The Last of Us and um, the girl who with all the gifts or whatever, which we could try to cover this season. We don't really have the time for it, but it's a really good movie. It, it's a fungal-based infection that, mm-hmm. that gets everybody in that one. That's still infected humans. They're infected with a fungus that causes them to attack other people. Yeah. And they spread their the fungus through the bites, you know. Yeah. Uh, Sean Roberts, who plays Tony in this film, would later play the villain Albert Wesker oh. in the uh, W.S. Anderson zombie films, uh, Afterlife, Retribution, and the final chapter. Uh, there are multiple cameos in this movie. Quentin Tarantino cameos in a voiceover as a newsreader. Interesting. So does Simon, Simon oh, wow. Pegg does. I, I heard his voice specifically when he started like calling in. Uh, Wes Craven does a cameo as a voice reader. Uh, Tom Savini is in the scene with the zombie doctors. A voice can be heard on the radio inviting people to aim for the head. Oh, of uh, course. That's Tom Savini saying it, uh, and it's actually lifted directly from the bonus features of the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Okay. Um, uh, Stephen King calls in, and you, you can hear him instantly because he's the one that's way over the top and, of course, making fun of religious people because that's all Stephen King does <laughs> when he's like, it's the end of the world, and yeah. I tell you, hallelujah, he's that guy that's in the background. On your knees, on your yeah. knees. Yeah, Gross. on your knees You're making times, this weird. Yes, you're making yes. this weird. Stop it. <laughs> And and the guy's a, a fucking nut job when it comes to politics. So you know there's, there's that, that too. 
Uh, and then, of course, George himself is the police officer at the beginning where he's telling them to shut off the cameras and cover it up or whatever, you know, whenever they're, the zombies first yeah. appear. So, um, closing thoughts on the movie. I give this movie it's like two and a half to three. It just, I, 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 I say a three because I can watch it and I don't hate it. It's just that it's, it's really disappointing after like George's. Bet you know, like even Land, I feel is a way better movie. Oh than yeah, this. Land like, is definitely you know, better than this. And it's just it's sad to see the decline in him as a filmmaker because it's like it, it's not that it, it it's not he's he knows how to do the job and he's he's a good director for what it is, but it's like his ideas were not as strong as they once were, and you can tell it. You know, it's like, okay, what's your point with this, George? Well, I just kind of find found footage to be kind of a shitty. It's like, okay, but that's not really a reason to make a movie. Like, you you had points. I mean, even if it was ham fisted, the the land of the dead, like the haves versus the have nots. That that's a focus. You know, it's yeah. like, I just didn't feel like he really got anything across with this movie. That that really, I mean. You know, people people barely even know that this is his movie. I mean, like you you met Diary of the Dead, and they're like, "What?" You know, it's yeah. like he only made like he only made like three or four zombie movies, right? And it's like, no, he made six, and <laughs> the that last one don't even talk about it. It's there's actual zombie cowboys fighting each other, or well, they're they're actually they're like zombie. Uh, Irish clan, oh, you know, clans fighting each other, and they have and they're smart like they are land to a certain extent and one girl's riding a zombie horse around it's it's a it's a mess of a fucking movie like i don't i don't know what he was trying to do with that but yeah uh yeah it's it's a three and i'm feeling generous by giving it that i mean there's certain days where i'm just like uh, uh, no i mean especially after savage land like man that movie's so much better than this like i mean it shows what you can do with the genre of found footage and zombies. Well, Wreck, of course, obviously does, but like, and then Romero just didn't, he didn't know what he was getting into with it. I just, I yeah. feel like he, he thought that it was too simple of a concept. And in thinking that he didn't get the concept to be able to actually do anything with it. Yeah. Um, this one for me is a three as well, but it's three for me in a more positive light because we've been, we've been watching some films I have not been enjoying. Uh, that have been getting less than a three. And that's like more than halfway, obviously. A two and a half would be 50%. So yeah. I feel like three is generous considering the film. I did like the film. I did get some scares. Uh, I would, I could see myself watching this one again. It is, this is way better than Life Force, 100%. Yes. yes. Um, and I, I didn't enjoy the actors, um, especially the scene where the, the blonde is being chased. When she ran, when he told her to run, she ran out into the fucking woods and instead of into the mansion. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing? That she's like, help me. Bitch, help yourself. <laughs> Have some foresight to understand that where you're going, th- there could be other zombies out there. And not only that, you're attracting more by screaming like a fucking dumbass. I don't know. She was pissing me off. That's why I wasn't and upset that when Texan he wouldn't help her. Texas accent that she had. That was a horrible you know? Texas accent. Like, I <laughs> don't even have a real Texas accent when I have one with my family from El Paso because there's so many, di- there's like three different types of Texan accents you can get in any kind of location, you know? Because everything's better in Texas, honey. I know. She know? sounded like Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob. <laughs> There, there's a coworker I work with. It's got a really thick accent at times, an Appalachian accent. And somebody, and she said that her, uh, and she's younger, uh, you know, coworker. And she said that her uh, high school nickname was Sandy Cheeks. Oh god! And when I first heard that, without, I mean, I got it because of the SpongeBob reference. Yes. But when she Sandy Cheeks, I thought. I think it's something you tell anybody when yeah. you got Sandy Cheeks. I mean, that's some fucking nasty shit, you know? Oh, it's just Sandy Cheeks. Calm down. It's not like she said she had a Sandy crack. No, <laughs> seriously, the people who did SpongeBob, they named her that character Sandy Cheeks as a more adult reference. Yes, Sandy Butt Cheeks. Oh, yeah. No, I know. I knew that. There's a I lot know, but, of adult reference. It's just funny her rattling off like very, and she's also kind of loud when she talks uh, very loudly. Oh, God. And I'm just like, like I wouldn't be telling that to people. Like that's not, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, the name of the town they live in is called Bikini Bottom. 
Exactly. You know, I mean, so they knew what they were doing with that. They did, and I respect them for it. That's all I'm going to say. So, yes, but a three it, for me, and um, this is a rewatch for me. If it's on, I'll watch it. I, 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 I don't have any qualms. I've watched it several times over the years. I, I, I don't hate it enough not to watch it. It's just that I, my first viewing of this, I, it really – said a bad you know like it was like a bad taste in my mouth because when i first watched this when it first came out i was just like oh god romero's back you know like yes. i you know watched land in the theater and i'm like and then i watched it and i was just like what the fuck did he <laughs> what um and and i didn't hate it but i was just like what and then then survival came out and i'm like I, I've blanked out survival and I will not, I will not watch that movie just because to honor George's legacy, I will not watch that fucking movie because it is so bad. It puts a, a, a like a bad, you know, it, it just, it's a, you know, a whole, just like a whole negative light on every movie he made. And it's just not, it just ignore that it was made and just, you know, all the rest of them are fine. You know, yeah. to a certain extent. George A. Romero was almost 70 years old when he made this film. So he was definitely on the decline. I think he passed away like 10 years later. Um, and so that's still a while. A decade is a long time in between. He wasn't like on his last, you know, limbs. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he was, kind of, he, maybe he was declining himself and this is kind of a show no, okay. the thing is, though, I, I met him after this at a convention, and you couldn't have asked. I mean, he was the sweetest person you could ever meet. And, oh, you know, yeah. and he he, is, he was had his faculties okay. about him, and you know, so it wasn't that. It's was just I feel like he lost his creativity. I think so. Point. That's what kind of what I'm getting at. I'm not so much like no faculties to him. He but he, he, he didn't turn into a Biden. Let's just no. put it that way. Well, and here's the thing too: was he just tired? Is he just tired? You know, I it's think, not the same. Well, yeah, and you got. I, part of the reason why this movie has such, or his movies around this time had such like a anti, you know, like right wing bent was because you got to remember this was around the time of like, and he had a point for this. Cause I, I do, I do agree with this to a certain extent. This was around like the, you know, nine 11 Bush stuff or right after it. And he was responding to that, that, that those are the shitty Republicans that everybody hates. So let's just put it out there. Yeah. They are sort of the ones that, uh, backed, Kamala, well, I'll throw that out there and just leave it, you know, but they, they did back her, those same shitty Republicans that everybody hates. I mean, Dick Cheney was like, I'll support Kamala. It's out there. Just, you know, so do with that what you will. I mean, if you want to support that, but, uh, so I don't, I don't hate the fact that he was, you know, so anti redneck at the time. Cause I feel like he was blaming them for, you know, but it wasn't the rednecks that, that it was the high level Republican elites that everybody hates. Yeah, exactly. I've always hated. <laughs> oh, he had to make a show of it. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, so I, I feel like three is giving this movie it's due. I mean, from both of us, I mean, it, it, it's not bad. It's just, it's not great. I yeah. mean, and it, and it should have been a lot better. Um, are you dreading quarantine and rec coming up? I don't know that I would say that I'm dreading, um, because I do remember, like, I, I know I liked quarantine and I do remember it being scary. So I don't know. Rec, maybe because you said this is a Spanish one. It's, I'm having the pr problem with rec because I don't speak Spanish of trying to, you know, read the, you know, the quick little subtitles because they're speaking very, very quickly, you know, and it makes sense because you would sit there and just be like, you know, just read off a line and then wait for the zombie to attack you. But trying to do that and watch the, the stuff on screen, I'm losing a little bit of the fear that I had with uh, quarantine because I could be in the moment with quarantine. Yeah. And Rick, I'm having to pull myself out just so I can read the subtitles. That's the oh. only thing that's bad about Rick, okay. in, in my opinion. Which I won't struggle too much since I'm on the Duolingo, don't want to brag. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, that No, that won't be a thing. I just remember, I don't generally like foreign films, but I did very well during uh, When Evil Lurks. And I'm not expecting this to be as scary as when evil lurks, but I do know that the Latin horror films are a lot better than I anticipated. Uh, well, th I think this is outright like Spain. Like, I yeah. mean, like, you know, but... Uh, so not Latin, but, you know, Spanish. Uh, it, well, yeah, it's not like Latin America, but it's still Latin. But yeah. it it's one of those things where, like, Rec, Rec is... Was I mean, it it's almost a one-for-one -one remake. So if you... I mean, from what I've seen so far of it, 
if you've seen quarantine, it's the same beats, at least up to the point that I'm at. Now, they might go a different route toward the end, uh-huh. and it might be a little bit different about why it happened and all that, but it's the same kind of – I mean, like, I'm even sitting there. I'm like, okay, this is the scene where the – you know, the, the old lady hops up and like, okay, there, that, that's redone. So like they took just wreck and just did a ma- American straight American version of it. Yeah. Uh, wreck two is going to be the interesting one for me because the shit hits the fan in wreck two. And that one, uh, had, they didn't follow up quarantine with another movie. So we didn't get like the continuation of the story after that. They made four wreck movies. I don't know if you're aware of that. Uh, the final one's called Apocalypse, meaning that it spreads way beyond just the building by the end of the series and becomes like basically the zombie apocalypse in the final one. But it stops being like a found footage, I think, after two. It's more like a regular movie after that. Yeah. So, anyways, we'll we'll see how those go. Uh, we could almost probably combine Wreck, talk about Wreck and Quarantine at the exact same time because it, unless it changes, like I said, they are the same exact movie like beat for beat. Okay. Um, Well, that folks, peace be with you. And with your spirit.